Hi, this is Debbie with the support team at VSI. Today we're going to just kind of walk through how to install WebUI on your system disk. So this is just a straight up easy peasy install, no customizations. Um, so when we're installing a product, it is always best to review the release notes. WebUI will have three components. We first have Lua, which is a scripting language. Uh, then we have the Civet Web, which is a light web browser. And then we have WebUI itself. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is read these release notes. So this is uh, the, uh, on the front here, we have the Lua release notes. And we have to have 8.4.1.h1 or higher a TCP IP stack, ODS5, um, and if you're going to do your own scripting, remember this is Lua, uh, it doesn't know we're going to, to install for WebUI, so if you want to use Lua, you're going to want to see compiler. Uh, you're going to install the kit here, and then they would like for you to put the uh, Lua startup in the SI startup VMS, and the Lua shutdown in the SI shutdown. Okay. Um, we can do this. We are not going to do that for Web UI. Okay, so that was Lua. Let's uh, put that away. Um, so Civet Web will be installed next. The Civet Web has the same uh, has, needs in Lua installed, um, but 841H1, you have to have a TCP IP stack. And if you're going to write your own code, you'll want your C compiler. Okay, uh, interestingly enough, uh, Civet Web has a whole manual here at GitHub, uh, which we will not be reviewing. Um, so we will go ahead and install this, and and post installation steps again are going to be to put the Civet Web startup in your Sci Startup BMS and the shutdown in your shutdown procedure. Okay. Uh, we will not be um, changing the owner of anything, okay? Okay, then WebUI itself. We will install WebUI. It required, obviously, 841H1, a, a, an IP SAC, Civet Web, Lua, and if you're going to integrate PerfDAT, you'll want to install PerfDAT. Okay, before we install, it wants this logical Civet Web dollar root to be defined. We would install the kit. After we do our configurations, we would then be able to do the Web UI restart. Web UI restart is an interesting thing. Uh, what Web UI restart does is it shuts down Civet Web and Lua and restarts them. Okay, so we don't actually need to put the Web UI dollar restart dot com into our startup procedure. Uh, if, if we've put Lua and Civet Web in our in our Sci Startup BMS, alternatively, I don't see any reason why we couldn't put WebUI Dollar Restart dot com in our Sci Startup underscore BMS dot com. So sometimes when I install, I put the Lua and the Civet Web in my Sci Startup, and sometimes I put the WebUI Restart. I'm still on the fence on that. And then we have some post installation steps. So we would go into Authorize and add these identifiers. A note about the identifiers is the WebUI underscore read gives you read access only. The WebUI underscore write gives you read and write access. Okay, then after you add the identifiers, you would grant them to whatever user you wanted to have these identifiers. <clears throat> okay, configuring the web server. They have conveniently put the Civet Web Conf WebUI <clears throat> and the services Conf WebUI into the Civet Web root directory of the, the configuration directory. That's great. We could just copy those files over, or we could edit our civetweb.conf and add this line. And uh, we could also edit our services.conf and add these two lines. If we're doing perfdat at the same time, we would add the third line for perfdat. Okay. And that is what we would do for basic install. So we'll be doing this install on Green Mountain today. 
Uh, I have conveniently already downloaded the kits from VSI FTP. They were in the open source directory. So I've placed them in my web UI directory on where on my uh, disk where I store all my install kits. So we'll notice here that when we downloaded, we got the Civic Web here on top with the Zebexi. That's what we would have downloaded. I've already run the Lua and the Web UI kits from the Zebexi, so they've already expanded here. So with each of the kits, you would then do the run command. And then we get the PCSI kit and the verification file. Okay, in the case of um, Lua and WebUI, it also came with release notes. Okay. So let's just go ahead and install. The first thing we'll install is Lua. Okay, that's uh, chugging away there. Now, we remember from the release notes, uh, well, and from the screen, it wants us to edit RSI startup underscore bms.com and place this in there and RSI shutdown. Well, uh, since we have to, we already know we have to install uh, Civet Web and it wants the same thing. Let's just install Civet Web and we can go, go do these things all at once. Okay, so next we'll install Civet Web. Okay, that seems to be a little slow starter, but it'll it'll chug along. Okay, so that is uh, the same thing. The post installation um, step is to go ahead and do that. Um, okay, now per the release notes, we really wanted to start these things up interactively. Uh, so let's just do that really quickly. Okay, and whoop, civet web dollar startup. Okay. Now we wanted to start these up because if we remember from the release notes for web UI, there are some logicals that we wanted to look at. Web UI wants to know where you installed civet web. So it wants to know about Civet Web Dollar Root because it, when it updates those config files, it wants to write to the right directory. Okay, so let's go ahead and then install uh, Web UI. If we didn't know it was spelled Web UI, we could we could do the product install asterisk and pick number three. So we know we want to update the civetweb.conf and the services.conf. And can, they're conveniently located in this directory. So we will say set default to that directory. Uh, we could either edit the file, um, because remember, we install, we just install this. We're not using Civet Web for anything else. So we can either edit civetweb.conf and add the lines, or we can copy these, uh, the Civet Web uh, Conf Web UI file over to civetweb.conf. I think we're going to go with that. So let's put a, uh, make our parse style to be extended, and then let's go ahead and copy. And let's do the same thing for the services. <clears throat> uh, 
So if we type these files out, we see the URL rewrite patterns is in there, and that's what uh, our release notes said we need to add. And our other line that is, we have our document root, that is uncommented. Okay, the other uncommon line is what listening port will we be running on? Today we're just going to do a simple install. So we'll be on the HTTP port of 8082. If we were going to, or you could put on any port you like. I should note that. Um, <clears throat> if we were going to do an SSL port, then they're suggesting port 443. You may be using that already for your Apache install. So you could make some other port. Uh, you could determine a different port that you wanted to use. The S at the end here will tell us that that port wants to use SSL. Let's type out the services file. Oh, whoop, we don't want that semicolon one. Okay, um, we add the it added all of the three lines, our login uh, line, our API token line, and then of course the perfdat line. Um, so we are ready to uh, we could restart the web UI then we'll be ready notice it's shutting down the civet web it doesn't give you a note about shutting down Lua but it's also shutting down Lua and then it's um, restarted it boom we have a new process now because we know we want to uh, start this later when we reboot this system. We will need to edit our size startup underscore bms.com. Um, I'm not going to spend the time on that because my size startup is quite long. Okay, um, for web UI here, uh, I will go in here and uncomment my Lua and my Civet web. Or alternatively, I'll uncomment the web UI restart. And I will add my shutdown to my uh, sizeshutdown.com. Okay, so we're not going to do that in this video. I presume yet you know how to edit your files. Okay. So let's pop over to our web browser. Put our address right up here in the bar. HTTP colon slash slash 10.10.111.37 was our address for this machine. And we're on port 8082. Okay, brings up this uh, little page here. I'm using the system account today, and uh, this is not going to work. I brought up the browser because I was thinking we would log in, but it dawns on me that we didn't finish the that I didn't not finish the prerequisite steps. So let's go into authorize. In my case. Um, I have a logical that points to my UAF file, so I am, I'm just going to leave myself right here. MCR authorize. Otherwise, you would probably set default to system, system. MCR authorize. I'm using a system account. Uh, so that's the account that I will modify today. But let's go ahead and add our identifier. Add slash ID. Um, Web UI underscore read. And then we want to add the right. Okay. We're going to grant that to the system account. If we just review again really quickly, if you want someone to be able to use the Web UI to just read or look at your system, we would grant the web, web UI read. If you wanted them to be able to read and write, aka modify your system, then you would give them the web UI write. Okay, so the system account is, is, is going to be blessed with both. Now we'll go back to our browser. 
http colon slash slash 10.10.111.37 colon 8082. Problem here, we're not able to connect. Well, what the heck. So I'm leaving this problem in because Every once in a while, Civet Web will have a little issue. So let's see if it's running. We do a show system. Actually, we want to do a show system slash process equals Civet. It's not running. Let's go back to the Web UI restart. Uh, it's just dollar startup Web UI dollar restart. And this um, this sometimes happens when we start. Oh, gonna need to type that correctly. Okay, so the web's not running. We knew that, and it says it's got the process. Let's recall that show system command. Yes, it is still running. Let's try this again over here. Whew, I feel better about this. So it it. Sometimes it will happen to you that um, you will try to connect to your Civet Web and it will crash. It will give you an ACK file if we were to look at the log file. This normally happens because you were already logged into Civet Web. Uh, uh, it happens with this app in specifically because we were already logged in here and I didn't properly log out before. As a matter of fact, I so improperly did, uh, didn't log out that I uninstalled the product and reinstalled it, and I was still appearing to be logged in. That sometimes confuses Civet Web. Boom, ACVIO. This is a kind of a known situation. We'll just deal with it by with a quick little restart, and then let's log into the system account. Okay, we are on Node Green Mountain. That's not a surprise to us. We it tells us a little bit about the system. So we are we have now installed Civet Web and Lua and Web UI. Web UI is functioning. Um, and if we review the steps, we, we checked our release notes. We put our well we obviously we got our kits and, and, and unpacked them, got read the release notes. We installed our three components. We are going to edit our size startup and our size shutdown. We edit our config files. Uh, we restarted Web UI. And bada bing, bada boom, we were able to log in. And so that is how simple the Web UI install will be. If, uh, we will have another video on how to install off of the system disk. Um, so I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. You guys have a great day and enjoy Web UI.